Hey everybody, this is your friendly neighborhood accountant, Eric Stockhausen, and today we're going to be looking at CD Projects H1 and some of their major announcements they've released to their investors about things that they're doing inside their company and their plans for Gwent. I hope you guys enjoy. If you want to skip ahead to any particular segment, there are links in the description to those time with timestamps. Please enjoy. Starting off with the financial results, we're going to be looking at the income statement. On the income statement, we can see where the company makes money from its customers, where the expenses are going, like what are they spending their money on in order to make money, like selling costs and stuff like that, and uh, how profitable the company is. So the top line will be your sales revenue, the bottom line will be your net profit, and underneath that at the very, very bottom separated from everything else is net profitability, and net profitability is just net profit divided by sales revenue. We can see that the sales revenue in 2015 H1, the year that the period in which Witcher 3 was released, they had 512 million schlotties in sales revenue, Zloty is like a Polish currency, and their net profit was 236 million. This came out to be about 46% net profitability. Moving on to the present 2017 H1, we can see that we have about half as much sales revenue, only 254 million Zlotys, and a net profitability about half as much as well of 118 million with a 47% net profitability. Now you might be wondering, how has the net profitability not changed between the year Witcher 3 came out and the year that Gwent went into beta? So there are two major reasons for this. The first major reason is that most of the expenses of the company are going to Cyberpunk 2077. As because Cyberpunk 2077 hasn't been released, none of those expenses are being recognized on this page. Imagine like blowing up a balloon, and it takes a lot of time. Uh, it takes some time to do that. You blow it, it gets bigger, bigger, and bigger. And once you pop it, all the air comes out instantly. Same thing with recognizing expenses on video games when you're in Europe. They defer the expenses until the game is released. So if we look at 2015H2, that second column there, we can see that their net profitability takes a big hit and goes down to 37%. Why? Because they're still recognizing expenses from Witcher 3 and the expansions related to it. While the revenue is taking a big hit because most of the revenue from video games comes month the game is released. Fortunately for CD Projekt, the revenue from their games tends to plateau and continue to be selling games for years after they were released, which is great. Most games, you completely forget about them a, couple, you know, a year later. Looking at the cost, we can see the selling costs drop dramatically after a release of a product. So that's what I meant by the balloon popping. So Witcher 3 comes out, it's $132 million. After that, and only an expansion comes out, Heart of Stone, it's 77 million. Blood and Wine, 74 million. Nothing being released, 39 million. It, dro it drops almost by 100 million Zlotys, just having nothing being released. Again, these are expenses related to developing the game. They might be years of development that are all being recognized all at once. Operating costs, that's more management's uh, responsibility. So if a company is well managed, the operating costs will go down. They're getting better prices for things. They're managing their labor well, better. They're getting stuff done faster, more efficiently. So the fact that they've lowered their operating costs reflects quality management. And C Project is very excited about having a drop in their operating cost. Now let's dive a little deeper and relate what I just talked about to Gwent specifically. So Gwent has about 100 developers playing on it. There's a plus there because they have some developers that are related just to the fact that Gwent is a live game with people actually playing it, where Cyberpunk 2077 doesn't have that. The revenue from Gwent kind of 
is self-sustaining. The developers are being paid ideally with the money that Gwent makes. Now, of course, when uh, Gwent was still in development and it still is, when it was in closed beta, there wasn't enough revenue for that. But once the game is in full release, we should expect it to be self-sustaining with the excess helping to pay the developers in the big name games, the giant games, kind of like Witcher 3 was. Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be a big game. Uh, there are about a three to one ratio of developers between Cyber Cyberpunk 2077 and Gwent. Um, and CD Projekt has announced that they want to go up to 800 developers uh, between their projects. So about double, so basically doubling the number of developers. Uh, the important thing to note is that Gwent is designed as a ongoing project that will continue to bring cash in the door to help pay for things. They describe it as on their strat strategy section of their website as a revenue generator. And that's, this is kind of how I imagine it's going to work. Of course, some of the money might not just go to developing like the big name games like Cyberpunk 27, but also growing the company and building more offices. So diving deeper into Gwent's revenue, we can we know that they made $30 million of revenue just from Gwent. Uh, 15 million of that was microtransactions. The other 15 supposedly came from the Chinese distributor. Now, if we look at the different microtransactions, we have the starter pack. The starter pack wasn't part of the first half of the year, um, so it doesn't affect that $15 million. However, looking forward, it will act as a catalyst. Think about it this way. Once you spend some money on a game, you become more willing to spend money on the game. You've gotten over that hurdle. You're okay with spending the money. The starter pack is like a discounted thing that says, buy me. Come on, buy me. You spend the money on it, okay, and then you feel fine. Okay, I can buy some more. You're, you'll buy the pet kegs at full price. The starter pack gets the ball rolling. Um, the kegs are your bread and butter. That's where you're going to get the majority of your microtransactions are going to be doing there. Um, throughout the year, it's, like, it's going to be fairly consistent. It might spike next to the single player campaigns. The single player campaigns are a major revenue source. Once it's released, you're hoping that it'll pay for itself and generate a profit. And I'm fairly certain that there aren't really single player campaigns and card games that are quite as intense as what they're suggesting Thornbreaker to be. A lot of emphasis has been put in the investor notes that Thornbreaker is gonna be like something that we should all be excited for because it's going to really revolutionize. It's like, it's gonna be a serious thing. It's gonna be like Witcher 3, but in a card game. Because <laughs> uh, they got they have the same storytelling and stuff like that. That's really exciting. Now we're gonna move on to the assets and liabilities. We're going to go a little faster now because we only really have two things to talk about on this. The expenditures on development projects, that's that big balloon we talked about. It's money spent towards game content that hasn't been released yet. So Thornbreaker, single player campaign, that would be in here. Cyberpunk 2077 would be the lion's share of this. Anything that CD Projekt Red hasn't released or uh, GOG hasn't put out yet goes into this. This is development projects. At, it's grown by about 56%. That's great. That's more future game for all of us. That's We want that. This is the account that grows. You know, like you might develop um, Cyberpunk 2077 for four years. Then once it's released, this account, just all the money that was spent on developing it leaves this account and goes into the income statement we just saw earlier. Equity uh, near the middle there. The, you might not, you can't see it here, but... You see that 19 million? It would have been 119 million zloty, the change in equity. But for the first time ever, CD Projekt shared its profits with its investors, $100 million of profit to their investors. And that's a big milestone for the company. They have never done a dividend like that before. The company is still growing. It didn't give all its um, profits away. 
But this is a sign that the company is, you know, being one of the big boys now. It can give out dividends. It doesn't need to keep investing its profits into growing itself. Now, you can't really talk about Gwent and without really talking about also the GOG. GOG is part of CD Projekt. It's a separate subsidiary from CD Projekt Red. However, they interact with each other. Uh, GOG is basically um, CD Projekt's answer to Valve's Steam. Um, it also allows them to sell without going to a middleman. It's great. It reduces their selling costs significantly. The light purple on this graph is CD Projekt Red Games, and the dark purple is all the other publishers. The vast majority of these publishers are indie for GOG. They don't. They have like a smat, kind of moderate splatter of AAA games, but it's mostly just you know ten dollar, fifteen dollar games there. All of them are DRM free. There's lots of money back guarantees and all these other things that are associated. It's very pro player. Um, distributor out there. Now, its relationship to Gwent is that it handles your player profile and all your, you know, your account information. It handles, I believe, matchmaking as well, since it's going to connect you with one player on the opposite side of the world and have all that player's information. Gwent is unique in that you can play with people on the other side of the world. There aren't these big separate servers. There's not a European server or an East Asian server. Chances are we're going to be playing with the Chinese players once they're allowed into the game. Um, as with no like bias towards, you know, like I'm not going to be matched with an American just because I'm in America. I might be matched with a Chinese player when I'm climbing the ladder uh, just because our ranks are close together. There's a lot of technology behind this that the players don't get to see, and the CEO kind of brags about it in his uh, presentation he had a couple days ago. Uh, if we look at the graph also, we can see that last bar at the end is a lot larger with the light purple than all the other ones, and that's Gwent there. That growth is Gwent. Uh, all those microtransactions that are going through GOG um, is what's increasing that size. So that's cool. Now we have a few other last things to say before we go. So first things first, we're going to talk about the global presence of CD Projekt. Like I said earlier, they're a growing company. They want more developers. They want to go up to that 800 mark. They also want to have an esports scene. All of this contributes to that, having these offices and representatives. Like the representative in Tokyo, that's to help them with their esports scene in East Asia. The Shanghai office is so that they can develop specifically for the Chinese market because they have unique censorship and internet issues that have to be developed around. Los An uh, United States also has that, and Europe has their own censorship stuff they have to deal with. Peggy. Moving on to their uh, internet footprint. One of the key tenets of CD Projekt is player outreach and that's why they have so much communication with players on reddit and all these other things you don't see discord and Reddit on this but they also do things on youtube twitter and facebook pretty nice all their invest they have a lot of investor videos just go on to youtube and that's one way you guys can keep track of the kind of information i'm talking about today is by subscribing to their youtube channel they receive a couple awards to change subject they got Stock Exchange Company of the Year uh, in March 2017, and they received awards in Innovation and Growth Prospects. The company's growing pretty good, and they're innovating with their new way of doing premium cards and how they're what they're doing with Cyberpunk 2077. That's all cool. Uh, talking about Gwent, they plan on having new game modes, new cards, new factions. That's all. A new faction's pretty exciting. New leaders and what caught me off guard, seasonal events. Mahakamum, Mahakam, uh, Ale Festival, basically Oktoberfest. I usually have to go to Tomball for that. Uh, <laughs> it's coming to Gwent. I'm happy. I'm sure you guys are all excited. Um, and that concludes this year, uh, this H1 summary for uh, C Project Red. If you have more questions or want some more information, just send me a comment and I'll reply to it. 
I know I kind of sped up at the very end, but trust me, there isn't very much else to say. Hope you guys enjoyed.